मधुरस वैहिन मंगल गीते जीवित मधुरस वैहिना आदर नक my Rethink CBD oil here and I'm gonna have some of that um, if I can get the fucking cap off you know I was thinking about like how you can't get the cap off of arthritis medicine can you imagine this 80 year old person trying to get into your medicine to get the fucking cap off, you know? That's just that's so fucking stupid. I mean, you gotta protect the children, of course, but I mean, can't you lock this shit up somewhere? Or, I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, there we go. I, I think you just squirt this in there. I don't know what the dose is. I want this to be a good show, but I think you only do one. But the question is, and under the tongue, right? And the question is, how good of a show do I want it to be? So I'm going to do two. <laughs> mm. All right. I'm going to light up a cigarette, Virginia Slim. These are terrific. And delicious, delicious cigarettes. Right, so by now, you've realized my talents as the host. So, let's show number 19. Let's do the show. The Tabernacle of Hedonism will not be seen tonight so that we may bring you this special broadcast, Bamboo with Tom Nordley. Hello out there in YouTube land. It's early August of 2020. We're still knee deep in the pandemic here in Florida. And one of the things that our family is doing at this time is we are trying to take out a patch of Madake Japanese timber bamboo that was planted either in our yard or the neighbor's yard many, many years ago before either of the current residents were around. Uh, the Madake grows up to about 50 or 60 feet tall, and essentially it's enormous blades of grass that also have some little secondary branches and even tertiary branches that come out. But you pretty much have to deal with it as single stalks. And because of the way that all the stalks grow in so close together from the common root system, you have to put a lot of thought into exactly which stalk you're going to cut and how you're going to go about doing that. 
and in this first installment we're going to be cutting this stalk which is a relatively new one it's about 20 feet tall and doesn't have any secondary branches coming off of it it's going to be a real easy cut as far as uh, my experience with this and I've been dealing with this patch for about 20 years and the time has come for everything that's left to go which is something like a hundred stocks worth I think some of them are going to be a lot tougher than this one very few of them are going to be easier I think so we're going to start off with uh, basic stuff I have already eyeballed the top of this stock which I'll be showing you in a different shot and it looks to me like if we were to drop a plumb line from the very tip top, it would probably come down right about here. And you don't see it now, but I put the piece of uh, bamboo on the ground to indicate where I think the uh, plumb line would be. That means that if there were no other bamboo stalks around, this one would fall more or less onto the northeast corner of our house, which we don't really want to happen but there's a lot of ways to prevent that. First up is that, like I said, stalks grow in so closely that they have these interconnecting sort of spatial relationships and you have to take those into account. The reason I mention this is there are a couple of great big stalks overhanging our house that will prevent this stalk from falling in a westerly direction and those uh, great big stalks even have some secondary branches that will discourage this stalk from falling in a southerly direction, which will bring it onto the roof of the porch, which we don't want either. <laughs> and the good news is that with something this simple, all I really need to do is use my left hand to grip the stalk and hang on to it throughout the cut. I just make one horizontal cut through with my pruning saw as quick as I can. And as soon as I get through to the far end and the butt end is now free, I just lift that and move it over probably about two, two and a half feet to the south. When I do that, there are some other crossing big stalks that are going to hold this one in place so that the top doesn't fall to the north. From there, it should be a snap for me to just get the old El Cheapo ladder, climb up on that, cut about a seven or eight foot section, knock that out of the way, lower down the rest, cut one more seven or eight foot section, and then there will probably be a tip of about three or four feet that's essentially bamboo shoot, raw bamboo shoot that's edible and just waiting for someone to process it. Last night, I had three big shoots left out separately from a pile of cut stalks. Somebody took everything away. So I hope right now somebody's cooking up some bamboo shoots and getting ready, yeah, for a big stir fry feed or something. So I think I have gone over all the essentials that we need to for right now. Uh, the only equipment that's going to be involved here for this cut is, is going to be a pair of work gloves and trusty craftsman pruning saw that my dad gave me, which uh, probably was purchased back in the 60s or so and is still working just fine. And so, whoop. Okay, now I'm going to do a handheld shot. Right here, this is the stock that we're going to be cutting. And we'll just take a look all the way on up. And is, there we go. As you can pretty well see, I think it's about 20 feet tall. Let me shake it a little, let me help. Yeah. There are no secondary branches on this stalk, which is great. And I'm going to pan down and show you the piece of bamboo that I put on the ground. That's where I think a plumb line would drop if we were to put one down all the way from the top. Let me pan back up from this angle. Maybe y'all are going to get sick of this. I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, it's uh, kind of tough to see the top from this angle but you can see 
that crossing of branches about 10 feet up. That is what I'm going to be relying on as a stabilizer once I get the base cut and I pull the butt end away about three feet to the south. Then the entire stock should rest comfortably against those three big crossing stocks. And it'll be a real cakewalk from there. In position to cut through the target stock here, I've moved that little chunk of bamboo out of the way and also cleared a couple other things. Hopefully Kaya the Wonder Dog won't be getting in the way. <clears throat> I got my left hand planted here. As soon as I get completely through with a cut, which is gonna be right about here, I am going to jump back and pull the stock back. My left hand ought to be enough to do the job. Hopefully at that point, the butt of the stock will land right about here. It'll be leaning up against those cross stocks and won't go any place. Then I can get up, dust myself off, and position the ladder so that I can cut it into about three pieces. So here we go. Sensational. Exactly what I wanted. It'll stay put for all the time I need. I am going to dust myself off for a moment. Then we're going to put the ladder in place and pick it up from there. Now I'm up on the third step of our ladder. This is just far enough that the top of the ladder doesn't interfere with my arm movement. I can rest my waist against the uh, top step here, feel nice and secure, pretty well uh, balanced. I'm going to be gripping the stock right about here and cutting just below. And when I complete the cut, the bottom end, of course, is gonna fall away. The top end is gonna start to fall down I don't know if there's anything in these crossing stocks that's going to stop it because it's going to be shorter than it is now. So I'm probably going to need to use my right arm and maybe a saw blade to just stop it for a moment so I can reposition. Shouldn't take very long. Here goes nothing. Okay, part one and part two. All right, I don't even have to move. I'm gonna cut through this stock, probably a little lower than I did the first one. The fiber is a little bit softer, easier to cut these last few feet. And of course, here is the growing tip. The tissue inside here can actually be cut up and prepared for food. So this is all going out to the curbside. Hopefully our uh, mystery customer from last night will be back. We got plenty more for him. More coming up. See you again soon with uh, another set of tips on cutting big boar bamboo. Thank you.
Hey, look, it's Mike Garvin, Minister of the Interior. Hey, Michael, what are you? I can see myself in your sunglasses. What are you wearing? That's why I wear them, Tom, so that everyone looks at themselves when they speak to me. Today I'm wearing Argentine Goodyear welted woven uh, monk strap shoes I found at Hospice Attic for a few dollars. Never been worn before. Italian socks, Irish linen pants, Spanish linen shirt I got for a quarter with an enormous coffee stain on the back. 1960s uh, semi-constructed jacket, golden age of American sartorial sensibility, a um, seersucker hanky, and a linen hanky, which I use to dry my head. Now about that mask. Ah. That's a good one. Hey, Billy, how are you? I love you guys. Love you too. Hey, is that Billy Rowan, the famous skateboarder? Hey, how you guys doing? You don't mind me putting you in the video real quick? I like doing carpentry. Did you ever notice that the Sean Hannity guy he sounds like a kid trying to pay a drug dealer that owes him like 20 bucks, but he only has 15? It's like, it's like, hey man, I'll, I'll get it for you tomorrow. Like I got, I got 30 out. I, I just, it sounds so weird. These guys, the politicians. He's also a failed priest and uh, actually a, a, a would-be priest and a failed pugilist. So this is my man. Thanks, Billy. Love you guys. Love you. Love Samurai you Skate Shop, everybody. Samurai Skate Shop behind Hardback Cafe. Uh, is anything going on? I mean, with the COVID and stuff, can you do anything in here? You got to wear a mask and you got to be ready to skate the uh, ramp and buy a board if you'd like to buy a board. But you can just come by and hang out. Right on. Thanks, Billy. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Where were we, Michael? That mask. Yes, the mask. My mom made it. And as you can see, there are uh, roses right here. So if I'm coughing up blood, nobody will notice. Hey, this is John Wazer, a.k.a. Wahoo. Coming at you from the VA. <clears throat> I guess I don't need this thing on me because there's nobody around. Uh, got a couple of songs to sing for you. This is one I wrote a few years ago for the Tabernacle, and I just updated it with a new uh, a new verse. <clears throat> I'm using grass. How sweet the scent that gets me oh so high And when I'm high I laugh a lot So hard I almost cry Like when I think of the GOP they're old, but not so grand. They just rob from the poor to give to the rich. The why, I just can't understand. It's not the Christian thing to do. If Christ were here, he'd say so. Ah, oh, but he's not here. Conservatives killed him so long ago. No Jamba Care has plenty of cash for medicinal Mary Jane. The Republic Party has no control, so still those funds remain. Oh, why, oh, why must 45 lie? You'd think the press could speak right. 
But of course, he is not our president. His vote was nearly three million light. Amusing grass, how sweet the smoke that gets us all so high. But the state of our nation is no joke. And that's why we should all just cry. <laughs> and uh, that tells us a little secret. The, uh, the Electoral College must go. In 2016, it disenfranchised nearly 3 million United States citizens. You can't call yourself a democracy when that's going on. And uh, there's a, another reason also why it should go away. Uh, we'd like to get into a multi-party system like all modern democracies have. And uh, that would mean that if you had three people running for president, the likelihood that one of them would get more than half the vote is pretty slight. And so the House of Representatives would always choose the president, and the Senate would always choose the vice president. That could lead to some assassinations, really. Uh, and then, of course, the, uh, the third in line would be the Speaker of the House. So you got back and forth right there. Uh, it's not a good deal. We need to get rid of that thing. Now, there is a, a movement underway to, uh, if, if enough states join in, they'll all agree to vote for the uh, popular vote winner. And if that gives us uh, the popular vote winner, that'll give the popular vote winner 50% plus one. And uh, that's what they're looking for. And that would work even if you had three or four people running and nobody got over 30% or so. The winner would take all 51 votes, all 50% plus one votes in the Electoral College. And for my protest song this week, another song from Phil Oaks. I cried when they shot Maker Evers. Tears ran down my spine, and I cried when they shot Mr. Kennedy, as though I'd lost a father of mine. But Malcolm X got what was coming, he got what he asked for this time. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. I go to civil rights rallies, and I put down the old D.A.R. D.A.R., that's the dikes of the American Revolution. I love Harry and Sidney and Sammy. I hope every colored boy becomes a star. But don't talk about revolution. That's going a little bit too far. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. I cheered when Humphrey was chosen, my faith in the system restored. I'm glad that the commies were thrown out of the AFL-CIO board. And I love Puerto Ricans and Negroes, as long as they don't move next door. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. The people of old Mississippi should all hang their heads in shame. I can't understand how their minds work. What's the matter, don't they watch less grain? But if you ask me to bust my children, I hope the cops take down your name. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. 
I read New Republic and Nation. I've learned to take every view. I, you know, I've memorized Learner and Golden. I feel like I'm almost a Jew. But when it comes to times like Korea, there's no one more red, white, and blue. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. I vote for the Democratic Party. They want the UN to be strong. And I go to all the Pete Seeger concerts. He sure gets me singing those songs. And I'll send all the money you ask for. But don't ask me to come on along. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. Once I was young and impulsive. I wore every conceivable pin. Even went to socialist meetings, learned all the old union hymns. But I've grown older and wiser, and that's why I'm turning you in. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. So love me, love me, love me. I think Joe Biden's a liberal. Not. Actually, I think Joe Biden is pretty much an idiot. But given the choice between an idiot and a doggone narcissistic megalomaniac, I know who I have to vote for. But what Biden really is, is a shill for the DNC, which is to say the Clinton wing of the Democratic Party. And they are beholden to Wall Street, and Biden will do whatever the DNC tells him to do. The votes, voters are demanding more progressive candidates from the party. As lower officers start get, to get more progressive, we may see some changes in DNC policies, but that will take a long while. The progressives can't just form a third party because the Constitution forces us into a two-party system. I just recently heard that the Alachua County Jail now has 70 inmates in segregation because they tested positive for COVID-19. This simply validates my recent concerns about the jail's ability to handle this type of medical problem. I said then that Bill Cervone's remarks, as quoted by WCJB, were lies, made when he knew, reasonably should have known, or had a duty to know, that his statements were utterly false. Lying seems prevalent in that office from the top down. To Satan in Tallahassee and his uh, ass lick sidekick uh, in the White House, uh, they, uh, they're just uh, not with it, I guess. Uh, they've, also, they've also gotten in hot water lately for their comments about COVID-19. There have been some names on Facebook, uh, some memes on Facebook lately about the opening schools in the fall. Those kids could always become carriers without symptoms and could transmit the disease to older relatives. Not to mention the fact that even if one kid in every school died of it, that would be a massive tragedy to each community. There was a news article about a 13-year-old girl who had COVID-19 so bad that even a ventilator couldn't keep her oxygenated, and they had to essentially hook her up to something akin to a heart-lung machine. And of course, they would have to have teachers, some of whom are quite old. My best teacher throughout my school years was in her 80s. She would have a hard time surviving COVID-19. And Florida is currently second only to Texas in the number of new cases. The Satan is one of the worst things to happen to Florida, or arguably even worse than Ricky, Rickety Scott. 
And uh, the, the recent remark by the Satan that the spike was not due to any behavior on the part of Floridians, it's just seasonal. That is utterly ridiculous. And uh, we need to we need to just get rid of that guy. And that's all I got. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time, hopefully. Superstition, wow! Child at her breast! This will murder she stop! Sick like a snake! Say it love her mind! Sick like a snake! Say it's a love we might! When I stop a really good! About a bunch of love we shot! When I stop a let me go! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Eric Gamlio.
sunset in the Rocky Mountain Canyon Coffee and my whiskey by the fire The solitude and beauty of this land that time forgot Is the only thing my heart did ever desire And if only you were here with me to hold me as I sleep I'd love you as I love the setting sun And some folks may complain about the fact that you're a sheep But I figure it's okay if I wear a condom I don't need no baby sheep that halfway look like me Terrorizing everyone in town Baby sheep with human faces walking on two legs Someone would be sure to gun them down I think tonight beneath the moon I'll masturbate to you And think about you sucking on my horn when I shave you naked as I seasonally do I have to say you really turn me on can't get married, they may turn the law around Either way, our love is wholly bound And if the Lord should take you from me, here is what I'll do I'll light the fire and make a barbecue I'll light the fire and make a barbecue Light the fire and make a barbecue Dum dum, beetle dum dum, beetle dum dum, beetle dum dum. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and Bert the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He duck and cover, duck and cover. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you duck and cover. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. Produced by Archer Productions, Incorporated. Hey, Bert, come on out and meet all these nice people, please. Oh, all right. We really can't blame you. You see, Bert is a very, very careful fellow. When there's danger, this is the way he keeps from being hurt. Sometimes it even saves his life. That's why these children are practicing to duck and cover just as you do in your school. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. First, you'll have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes. You'll know when it comes. We hope it never comes, but we must get ready. It looks something like this. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you were not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. It could knock you down hard or throw you against a tree or a wall. It is such a big explosion, 
It can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. But if you duck and cover like Bert, it will be much safer. You know how bad sunburn can feel. The atomic bomb flash could burn you worse than a terrible sunburn, especially where you're not covered. Now, you and I don't have shells to crawl into like Bert the Turtle, so we have to cover up in our own way. First, you duck, and then you cover. And very tightly, you cover the back of your neck and your face. Duck and cover underneath a table or desk or anything else close by. In Betty's school, they are talking about the atomic bomb, too. Betty is asking her teacher, how can we tell when the atomic bomb may explode? And her teacher is explaining that there are two kinds of attack, with warning and without any warning. We think that most of the time we will be warned before the bomb explodes, so there will be time for us to get into our homes, schools, or some other safe place. Our civil defense workers now our men in uniform will do everything they can to warn us before enemy planes can bring a bomb near us. You may be in your schoolyard playing when the signal comes. That signal means to stop whatever you are doing and get to the nearest safe place fast. Always remember, a flash of an atomic bomb can come at any time, no matter where you may be. Here are some older boys showing what to do if the flash comes when you are not in the classroom. This is what to do if you should be in a corridor. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Remember to keep your face and the back of your neck covered tightly. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. Then, if the glass breaks and flies through the air, it won't cut you. You might be eating your lunch when the flash comes. Duck and cover under the table. Then, if the explosion makes anything in the room fall down, it can't fall on you. We must know how to duck and cover in the school bus, or in any other bus or streetcar. Duck and cover. Don't wait. Duck away from the windows fast. The glass may break and fly through the air and cut you. If you do not know just what to do, ask your teacher when this film is over. Discuss what you could do in different places if a bomb explodes. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Duck and cover. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our spiritual leader, the Reverend Angel Dust. Ah. Hallelujah. God is blessed, everyone. May you find a quarter pound in the dumpster. Today is August 5th. Next Wednesday will be August 12th. And the show will run into August 13th. That's lucky. And I would like to pray for all the lucky members of the Tabernacle of Hedonism who may not be using drugs but are addicted to make up sex. I pray for you. And I also pray for Madonna who is addicted to the placebo effect of hydroxycocanone. But I also laud her for exposing the great big COVID-19 industry. Uh, hydroxycocanone may not cure the symptoms of COVID-19, but there certainly are a lot of people making money off the pandemic. And she said that in public, and of course everybody thought she was crazy. But most hedge fund managers will probably not disagree with her. For thine is the cow pie, the rain, and the shroom. Amen. A woman. A joint. A little bit of makeup sex. 
No alcohol. God is blessed. Found Poems The poet often forages, sitting at the bar or on the bus, quite outside the conversation, leaning on walls, peeking in windows, holding a glass against the glass, collecting clips and snippets, or examining billboards, road signs, hats, shirts, tattoos, fine print on menus, graffiti on walls near broken doors, collecting clips and snippets, or most bold from books and other published works, real published works, about DNA, or giant robots, or a gardener's life story, or from other poems, without citing sources, no naming names, unless the author's name is stolen, too, for new art's sake. The poet lights another cigar. What are you looking at? So what? It's no big deal. We speak and write, and every word has been spoken or written before. It's all found words. It's all found poems. And it's all chips off the block. Found poems. In the genes. We're just clips and snippets. We're all, every one of us, found poems. In the genes.